Good afternoon. In this video, we're going to talk about different ways of arraying parts. So in order to array a part, we first need to get a part onto our tables. So let's double click our table and let's click our part. And then we're going to edit it because right now it's on the ground and also rotated the wrong way. So let's go edit part. And then let's change the rotation of this so that it is upright. There we go. And also direction is also matches our UCS. And then we bring it up to the top here. So I'm going to bring this up to where it generally snaps, which it should be a nice nominal number of, say, 400. And we can zoom in there and make sure everything is good. And it looks like everything is good. So now we are sitting on top of the table. Now, traditionally, if you're going to do just rows and columns, you can just go add. And then you'll see array and you have the, your traditional parts count. So we have in the X direction, the Y direction, and then also the Z direction. So you can see right now we have our two in the direction of X, three in the direction of Y, and then one in the direction of Z. And these are our offset distances. Now we can change it to area if we want to. So if we want to fill in a certain area, but we're going to go distance here and see what it looks like. So we'll go say 100. And we'll say 100 difference and then nothing in the Z direction, even though we have one part. So if I hit OK, you will now see we have our six parts in the different columns. So we have our six parts in a different column. Um, we can also add in there. We can change this and modify this. So if we want to delete this, hit OK and then add. And then we can also say, let's go up in the Z coordinate. So we'll go two and then we'll change it to say 100 so that they're sitting on top of each other. Hit OK. And now we have our six parts with two sitting on top of each other. Okay, so we can go back there and delete and we can mess around with this a little bit. We can add and say we don't want to go in the forward direction, we want to go backwards, we can go negative in the Y direction, and then you'll see what happens. So now we're going in the Y direction, 100 millimeters instead of going to the right. So I'm going to just delete that. And again, you can play around with what direction is what again, this matches the tables UCS. So you have to look at what direction is the table looking at in order to get that because you can't look at the part. So if I hit cancel on this and cancel on this, if I check the part, you can see here's my y direction here's my x direction if i check the table so if i'm looking at the table here here is my y direction and my x direction which is why we made a y direction positive this way and an x direction positive this way if we go negative x then it goes backwards all right so now what happens do if we want to have a pattern that is not rectangular array so an example of maybe i want to have a circle or a different shape that we can't produce when we're creating uh, the column and row array that is traditional to this setup so then we're going to have to use something called a csv file and get our coordinates from that position. So here I have an inventor file with a setup. So I just drew a part with a quick circular array and I made some holes in there to get some numbers really easily using the whole function. So here we have a whole pattern function and I have my X and Y coordinates based off of the center point. So I have the center as my zero, zero, and then it's going to array these around. I have 12 total, and it has a X dimension from the center and then a Y dimension from the center. Now from here, I need to convert this to a CSV file so that RoboGuide can actually read it. So I'm gonna right click on this, and you generally can do this in most other CAD programs, and we're going to go to table, and we're going to go export table, and we can export this table as a CSV file. So here's our CSV file that we can read. I'm going to then open it up in Excel. And then you'll see I have the same chart as you saw in Inventor. So the first thing I need to do is clean this up. So I'm going to get rid of these items up top there. I don't need the dimension down. I don't need these dimensions here. <laughs> And we want to make sure that there's no spaces in here as well. So I'm going to just get rid of this column here. And we get rid of these two rows. Now I'm going to get rid of one for now. And then because I'm going to label what each one of these rows are. So in RoboGuide, when it's looking at the part, it's going to look at X, Y, Z. 
So I was going to look at the first column being X, and then the second column being Y, and the third column is going to be Z, and then it's going to be W, P, R for those rotations around those axes. So I'm just going to center these, just kind of make it easy. So we have X direction, we have our Y direction, we have our Z direction. So we need to get this number as well as these other three numbers from RoboGuide because we have the X and Y placement, we just need to know how far up. So let's go up to RoboGuide here and then I'm going to double click our table and then here's our part and our part is 400 millimeters with a W of 90 and a P of zero and a R of 90. So we need to put these into our Excel file. So let's go into the Excel file here and we're going to go 400 bring that down and then we have 90 bring that down zero and then 90 again so that we match the same rotation as the part in roboguide so we have our x y z w p r so now we get rid of this row one now and i'm going to file save this so now that i have this file i'm going to close out the file and I'm going to go back into our robo guide and we're going to double click the table and here's our part. So we're going to go now add and instead of the array up top, we're going to go to import parts offset data and we click that. And here's our CSV file and we're going to find that CSV file that we have saved onto our desktop. There's our CSV file and generally you want to save this file in the same folder as your actual robot so that you're not missing anything when you're moving things. So we hit OK and there's our array. So now we have our different parts. Now we have the original part inside here. So we just turn that off, click and then hit apply. And now we are a circular array with parts that we can actually pick up. So those are the multiple ways we can array items in RoboGuide, either by the table array or by an Excel array.